Okay. Now today's Saturday, the 4th. I was watching the news this morning. Also seen it on Facebook. Seen it in the news articles on Facebook. Uh, Muhammad Ali passed away yesterday up in uh, Phoenix. Louisville, Kentucky, where he was born and raised, the mayor was given his life history, the house he was raised in is now a museum. But I remember this as a teenager, Cassius Clay, gold medalist, 1960. I wasn't really into it then. Yeah, I was only 10 years old. Didn't really get into the Olympics until, no, oh geez, I must have been about 13. But I did find out that Cassius Clay got a gold medal in 1960. But Cassius Clay was a draft dodger. That, at the time, I remember, I believe I lost my first friend in Vietnam. So naturally the hatred towards Cassius Clay, he was a wimp, no good, he was trash. Now that I'm 66, and thanks again for all the birthday wishes three days ago, my views of Cassius Clay has changed. He was a man that stood up for what he believed in. And he made it clear. He did not falter. He did not bend. He stood up for his beliefs. And he went forward with his beliefs. He became the world's best boxer. I found out this morning while watching CNN News that when he was 12 years old somebody stole his red bicycle. And uh, when he reported it he told the cop that he's going to fight the guy and beat him up. And the cop looked at Cassius Clay, 12 year old little boy, and said, well, before you fight him, you got to learn how to box. I think that was Cassius Clay's inspiration to take up boxing because of somebody stealing his bicycle. But anyways, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, was a Muslim. I knew it. He professed it, but he did not, how should I say this, force people to follow him. He didn't do that. He stood as an icon for the faith that he believed in. And he took it all the way through his life. The walk of fame, his star. It's hanging on a wall. Because he has so much respect for his faith that he did not want people to walk on his sidewalk, to step on him. So they put it up on the wall. Now that's what I learned this morning. That's what I found out this morning while watching the CNN news. I wish I had the faith of Muhammad Ali in my Christian book. I wish I had the faith that my mom had. I wish I had the faith that my grandfather had. I wish I had the faith 
that Pastor Truex had his whole life. I know very little about Pastor Truex, but I recall going to his house one day and doing some work with him in his backyard. He prayed as he worked. I don't think the man took ten breaths without talking to God. I wonder if I can ever do that. I wonder if I can ever come to the point where from the time that I wake up until I fall asleep, my mind will be set on God. That's never happened in my life. I believe it's happened in Chuck's, my grandfather's life. I believe it happened in Mom's life. And I also believe that it happened in Cassius Clay's life. True. He may worship a different God. But is it different? Is the God that Muhammad Ali worshipped and honored the same God as I do? That's interesting, isn't it? Because the Quran is their Bible. They put a lot of faith in that book. The Bible that I read, I put all my faith in that book. Two different books. Could it be the same God for both of them? I don't think that question is going to be answered until the day I die. When I go up there and I see Cassius Clay with, <laughs> with Chuck in the boxing ring <laughs> warming up. <laughs> or Gabriel. <laughs> I just had a thought too. I can see Gabriel, you know, the angel that visited Mary and Cassius Clay in a boxing ring in heaven. <laughs> Punching blows to each other. <laughs> I just thought I'd bring that out, a little bit of humor. But uh, reality is this. I got a lot of respect for Cassius Clay. Contrary to what I had when I heard on the news that he avoided the draft and was kicked out of boxing. I think my statement at that time was the nigger's getting what he wants. He's a draft dodger, he's trash. They ought to put him in jail. I believe my system has changed. But I still believe that every American citizen, male and female, should spend their time in service. Now you can be a conscientious objector and still serve in the military. All you got to do is stay stateside, become a Remington Raider, like my nephew Matt. Your main weapon is a typewriter. It's possible to be a draft dodger and still serve this country in the military. They just can't send you to war. They can't send you against your beliefs. And I think that's possible. Just like it's possible that the gays and lesbians can also serve. So, anyway, just more food for thought. Anyway, 
Have a beautiful, beautiful Saturday, and I'm looking at just over 10 minutes. Bye.